been focusing on getting the orange car ready for Texas, um, but I wanted to take out some time and show you one of the, the new products that I've been keeping hush for quite a long time. Something that I'm really excited about and something that's gonna be awesome for, you know, probably 90% of my customers, the, the street car guys. So I'm gonna show you now what we got going on. This is the new Granis Racing product. This is the quick time bell that I've been using in all the kits. And this is the new Granis Racing cast aluminum bell housing. You can see it's got the logo in there and it's a direct fit from uh, the T56 to the 2J motor. So this is gonna be an amazing product for the streetcar guys. It's gonna come with a little bit less cost and it's gonna have some other added benefits, which I'll talk about now. Let's talk about the pros and cons between a SFI steel bell housing, like the quick time unit and an aluminum bell. So the first thing is resonance. So the noise levels that you get from a steel bell. So a steel bell is 100% rigid. Um, it's a thinner material and it's steel. So it's kind of like a, a typical bell that makes noise. So if you hit a, a, a uh, like the Liberty Bell with a hammer, you're gonna hear that dong and it's gonna ring for a long time. The resonance in it, it makes a lot of noise coming through. Uh, all the, the, the transmission, engine noise, clutch noise, all resonates from that bell. The aluminum bells are like a OEM bell that you would get on a, a normal transmission and they tend to dampen the noise more and they're generally quiet. And one of the great things um, about this bell that's gonna be different from the quick time is I'm having it machined locally here to be within the spec that Tremec requires. So within five thou, this bell will be centered. You should not have to index it uh, on your motor unless you've had like billet main caps put in where they line honed and that might set your, your crank height up higher where you might be off. That would be the only instance I would recommend uh, indexing this bell housing. So, on the quick time, I've had lots of complaints, guys that are trying to install these in their car, in the garage, on jack stands, is the dowel pins. Sometimes those dowel pins just do not come out easily and you're in there uh, using vice grips, trying to get them out. Sometimes the vice grips rip the dowel up to the point where you can't even get it out. You have to weld to it to pull the dowel out. So, and then you, and then you have to buy the $50 um, offset dowels from quick time as well. So it just makes a lot more work. It probably adds, you know, three hours to an install um, to do the indexing of a bell. Uh, the aluminum bell, you will not have that. The other thing that I did in this bell design is I cut a pocket out here so that you can get access into the trans. So if we take a front plate, this is a Magnum front plate, like on a typical T56 Magnum, and we'll install it here onto, and there you can hear that resonance. You, there you could hear the resonance noise and the ringing noise. This is all the more room you have to see up in there to see your bearing uh, air gap and and you can't really do any work at all um, with that front plate on there with the with the bell installed. That's that's all you get. So the one thing I wanted to do was try to get a little more access in here so that you could maybe adjust your bearing if need be. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and move this front plate over to my bell. show you it's not on there all the way I'd have to slightly tap it in this is a prototype bell so we're still working on the dimensioning of the of the whole pattern but you can see I can I can actually get my hand in here and work so if I needed to I could probably get a wrench in here and adjust my release bearing which would be mounted on the, the front plate there with the input shaft passing through so Plenty of room, even, even though it's not installed all the way, you can see how much room I have in there. So that's one of the nice things about these bells as well. It's gonna have access to work on the car, which is similar to like the V160. It has a, an access panel here um, and an access panel on the other side as well. But this one, this should be plenty for, for you to work with. So let's go back to the warehouse and I'll show you just how many of these I have and what's going on with them right now. So if we run back here to the warehouse, excuse the mess in here, it's still a work in progress. We just moved in here about two months ago, so it's still kind of hodgepodge. But, so I have 
these two crates, which are going to the machine shop tomorrow, Monday. And then I have four more crates. Each of these has 50 bells in them. So six total crates, 300 transmissions ready to go to the machine shop. And then here you can see these are just the raw castings. There's no um, uh, pattern uh, cut into these and they're not decked and not machined. I'm having all the machine work done here locally to me so that I can actually be a part of the process and make sure I get it uh, exactly right to, so that we, we don't have to worry about indexing these things. So the way the kits are gonna work now is the GR700 transmission kit for the Supra IS300 FD, all the chassis that I do the GR700 kit for, now is gonna come standard with the aluminum bell. So then there'll be basically a, a race version GR700 or basically you'll be able to choose that you want the steel bell if you're gonna be drag racing a lot and you want the SFI protection for the bell. So GR700 kits now are gonna become standard with aluminum bell. Uh, if you need the race version, it's gonna be a small upgrade price now for the quick time bell. And so the, what I recommend, if you want the easiest to install, the most quiet setup, go with the aluminum bell. If you think you're gonna be racing a lot, then I would go with the SFI bell. The other thing I wanna mention is, I'm not gonna be selling these bells individually right now, like just as you can't just buy a bell off my website. These are gonna be reserved for my kits for now until I can get a decent amount of stock of these where I have them all machined, ready to go. Once I feel comfortable and I have enough of them in stock that I can provide them to my customers uh, that are buying kits and provide them uh, individually, I will do that. But for right now, these are only gonna be available as part of my transmission kits.